Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Welcome to worship this Easter morning. Welcome to worship. Coming to you from Grace Lutheran Church in Fremont, Ohio. I am Maureen Pump, the synodically authorized minister here at Grace, and I welcome you to this Easter celebration as together we cry out, Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. I want to thank all the volunteers, our staff, of course, here at Grace, but all the volunteers that came in and gave of their time and their abilities to bring this service to you this Easter morning. I want to remind um, our congregation and beyond that the church office will be closed on Easter Monday, but, but will be back open on Tuesday and ready to receive you at 9 o'clock in the office. So together, let us worship today our risen Lord. grace and peace of Jesus Christ, who was raised from the dead to bring everlasting hope, be with you all. 
and also with you. Please pray with me. Oh God, you gave your only Son to suffer, suffer death on the cross for our redemption. And by his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin so that, that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. The first reading for this morning is from the 10th chapter of the book of Acts. Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the bat baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and of the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Good morning. It's time for the children's message. Last week, we talked about a celebration that people had when Jesus rode his donkey into Jerusalem and how everybody celebrated waving palm branches. Well, this morning, I want to share with you what happened the rest of the week. So I have a set of resurrection eggs that we're going to go through. And this way we can kind of learn what happened. And I have a printable set of those that you can make on our Facebook page. So after Jesus rode his donkey into Jerusalem, Judas betrayed him for 30 pieces of silver. And then Jesus and his disciples had the Last Supper. And Jesus used wine to teach them about how he was going to die. Then... After the Last Supper, Jesus and the disciples went to the Garden of Gethsemane and they prayed there in the garden. So we use praying hands to help us remember about the Garden in Gethsemane. It was there in the garden where Jesus was arrested. And after he was tried by Pontius Pilate, the Roman Soldiers used leather whips and they beat Jesus. After they beat him, they twisted together a crown of thorns, mocking him and saying, Hail, long live the king of the Jews. Then three nails pierced his hands and his feet, attaching him to the cross. As he lay on the cross dying, the Roman soldiers rolled dice and cast lots to see who would get to keep his robe. Finally, when he was dead, to make sure that he had passed, 
They pierced him in the side with a spear. Jesus' body was then wrapped in a white linen and laid in a tomb. In front of that tomb, they placed a rock so that no one could steal the body and guards were put there to keep people away. But that next morning on Easter, the stone was rolled away. And the women who came to the tomb to clean his body, well, they found it empty. And an angel appeared to them and told them that he had risen. Go and tell the others. Alleluia! Christ is risen! Christ is risen indeed! Now I have a special challenge for you. I'd like you to look at this photo here. Stare at the four dots in the center of the photo. Keep staring at them. You really focused on them? Now close your eyes. Do you see an image of Jesus? Some do and some don't. But just like in real life and how women went to the tomb, some people don't find Jesus because where they are looking is the wrong place. Are you looking for Jesus in the right place? I invite you to join me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Thank you so much for the gift of Jesus for our sins. And we thank you for this blessed Easter morning that he has risen and that he has risen for us. We pray all this in your precious and holy name. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as, as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, 
I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I ended the Palm Sunday message with the stone had been rolled in front of the tomb, the soldiers placed on either side, and Jesus was dead. Jesus was dead. But today, today, the stone is rolled away, the door is open, the tomb is empty, and he is risen. He is risen indeed. And we celebrate today the empty tomb. C.S. Lewis once said, I believe in Christianity as I believe that the sun has risen, not because I see it, but because by it, I see everything else. By it, I see everything else. Lewis, of course, is speaking about that bright orange ball of gases in the sky and the light that it gives off so that we are able to see clearly. But as Christians, we also can see, by the, say, by the light of the sun, we believe in Christ because by the light of the sun, we are able to see everything clearly. By the light of the sun, S-O-N, we are able every day to see every bit of our lives clearly through the light of the sun, God's son our Savior, who came out of that tomb, leaving it empty, the grave closed behind. We see every day by the light of the sun. Or do we? Or do we? It's Easter morning. Mary goes to the tomb. She's headed to the tomb, and she gets there, and the stone is rolled away, and she doesn't know what to think at first. And she looks in, and Jesus is gone. The body's not there. What have they done with her Lord? They've taken Jesus from her. She can't find him. She runs back to get the other disciples, and they all come, Peter and John, the one that Jesus loved. And they come to the tomb and they look in and the disciples eventually go in, not Mary. Mary stays outside. She's bewildered. She's frightened. She's crying. And the disciples go in, but Jesus isn't there. And they believe. Everything he has told them comes back to mind and they believe. They're still a little bewildered. They don't understand the mystery of it all. But the tomb is empty. And they go back home. They're done looking into the tomb. They're done staying in the place of the dead. They're done with all of the dead clothes, ideas, pain. They go home. They believe. But Mary stands weeping. Mary stands weeping because she cannot find her Lord. She thinks someone has taken Jesus from her. Where have they taken him? Will she ever find him again? She's alone. And she stands facing that empty, dead place. A place of death, ending, no hope. Eventually, she turns, and it is when she turns away from the tomb, <coughs> when she turns away from the dead place, that she sees this man, who she believes is a gardener, and she says to him, where is my Jesus? Have you taken Jesus? Where have you put him? You took my Jesus away from me. I can't find him. I don't know where to look for him. 
She believes the man to be a gardener. But she is at least turned away from the tomb. And Jesus speaks her name. Mary? Mary. Mary. And when Jesus speaks her name, she hears his voice. She sees him by the light of the sun, and she realizes this is Jesus. She had to turn away from the dead place, the hopelessness, the loss, the pain, the suffering, the tomb, in order to turn and see Jesus. She had to turn away from the despair to see Jesus. The light of the sun enabled her to see clearly that this was her Lord. She must want to hug him. Wouldn't you want to hug him? I imagine Mary reaching out to hug him, to hold on to Jesus, who she thought she lost, but now is found. She's found him, and he says, Mary, don't, don't, ha- don't touch me. Don't try to hold me. Don't try to hug me. I still need to ascend to my God and your God, my Father and your Father. And Mary is filled with joy, and she runs back, and she tells the disciples, I have seen the Lord. I have seen the Lord. I have seen the Lord for myself. I saw him by the light of the sun. Do we? Do we? Can we turn away from the tomb? Can we turn away? from the dead stuff, the disappointment, the anger, the frustration, finger-pointing, unforgiveness, blaming. Can we turn away and by the light of the sun see Jesus in our everyday lives? There's no sugarcoating at church. (laughs) We are celebrating here at Grace our second Easter, not in this sanctuary. And many of us are angry and frustrated and sad and grieving and filled with sorrow. There's some blaming, there's some finger pointing, because we're so sad not to be here. We have battled our way over this past year through this pandemic, sometimes clawing our way through it. And we don't understand why. And we wonder when, when is this going to end? And I hear people saying, I'm over it. I'm over it. Well, you can be over it all you want. That doesn't mean the virus is gone. What about, what about if rather than saying, I'm just over it, We say, you know what, by the light of the sun, I'm going to keep on battling my way through this pandemic. I'm going to keep on looking for Jesus in the midst of it. What if we realize that there will always be something in our lives that will try to grab our attention and hold it at that tomb? There will always be something that tries to pull us into the dead stuff so that we are not able or we choose not to look at every day by the light of the sun. You know, this past year has not just been about a pandemic. There have been many things over this past year that have challenged us. The deaths whether from the pandemic, heart disease, cancer, accidents, the people isolated in their homes, 
in nursing homes, separated from their families for over a year. Teachers and students trying to learn to teach and learn online. People who have had COVID and survived it, but they're not quite the same. There have been so many things that have challenged us over the past year, threatened to pull us back into the tomb, keep our focus on the dead things. And that's not to mention political and social unrest. But church, we have a choice how we see every day. Are we going to stand looking at the tomb and the dead stuff? Are we going to throw off the grave clothes and look at our days by the light of the sun? We have the power. We have the power. Jeremy Camp, popular Christian artist, sings a song called Same Power. And a part of it says the same power the same power that rose Jesus from the grave, the same power commands the dead to wake. That same power lives in us. We have the power to be the Easter people we are called to be. We have the power to turn away, rise up, and walk out of the garden instead of wandering in the garden, looking for Jesus, thinking he's left us, thinking we're all alone. We have the power to stop wandering in the garden and look at our lives by the light of the sun and be the Easter people we are called to be, people of hope and new life and resurrection, rising up, walking out. of the dead places, leaving the grave clothes behind, a finger pointing, blaming, unforgiveness, anger, frustration, hopelessness. But it's a choice. It's always a choice. But we have the power to make the choice to rise up, just as Jesus is risen, to rise up and walk out and see our lives by the light of the sun. Have we seen him? Are you looking? You can find him. He's right there. He's right behind us, beside us, in front of us, all around us. He's in the eyes and the voices and the touch and the healing of every medical professional. These same doctors and nurses who have seen things over the past year they will never forget are the same people that are showing the sick and the dying Jesus. As they sit and they hold their hands and they speak tenderly to them as they die, they are Jesus coming to them. Do we see Jesus as the one who worked through the science and the medical community to bring the healing and the vaccines? Do we see Jesus in the eyes of every teacher that had to turn on a dime and learn how to teach online? And these students who have helped one another, who have struggled to learn? Do we see Jesus in every neighbor who has gone to help another neighbor who is isolated, home, alone, afraid to go out, and they have shopped for them, visited them, called them, sent a note, a card? That's Jesus. Do we see Jesus at work placing the technology we needed far before we ever knew we were going to need it for virtual worship, that's Jesus. Do we see Jesus at St. John's every Sunday when we gather for car church? Different people from different congregations coming together, together to worship? That didn't happen all that many years ago. 
Jesus has been with us every step of the way. And he's not going anywhere. He's right here. But can we see him? Do we make the choice to use the power in us to see every day of our lives by the light of the sun? Or do we allow the dead things to grasp us and pull our vision into that tomb? That's a challenge for the church. We are called to be Easter people. People of hope. People who are positive. People of faith. People who rise up out of the dead things and go forward by the light of the sun. You know, I have people ask me often, is church ever going to open again? Ever's a long time. Is the church ever going to open again? And I answer, of course. Church was never closed. We might not have sat in these pews side by side, Church was never closed. We are the church. The people are the church. You can say that that sugar coats it. And I know it's hard. But church, we are the church. And we have the choice. The power to make the choice to leave behind the dead stuff and go forward together, rise up and go forward together and be the church. Until, yes, soon we will gather together in worship. That's challenge. Here's the good news. You already know what it is. Here's the good news. Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. Now let the church rise also. Amen.
Let us join together as we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Praise to you for your power revealed in the resurrection. Fill your church with the power of your love that is stronger than death. Send us to tell the good news wherever death holds sway. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Praise to you for your life at work in the resurrection. Fill all of creation with your life. Bring it to blossom and flourish. Use it to remind us of your persistent grace. Cultivate our care for what you have made. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Praise to you for the peace made possible in the resurrection. Fill the nations with your peace. Draw together people of all nations and languages. Reveal new possibilities and inspire new beginnings. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Praise to you for the hope of the resurrection. Fill all in need with hope, those who are afraid or confused, those who are sick or suffering, those who are dying, and those who grieve. Today we especially pray for Donna and Jim, Sandy, Sharon, and Rick. Assure them of your promises. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Praise to you for the joy of your resurrection. Fill this assembly with joy as we are called your beloved in baptism. Multiply that joy so that we share it at home, at work, and in our community. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Praise to you for your faithfulness revealed in the resurrection. Fill us with trust that we join with all who have gone before us in proclaiming your mercy endures forever. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and also with you. Please take this time to make the sign of the cross on your own forehead or on the forehead of someone that you are with. May our gracious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus, the God, the God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen.
Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia! Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia! Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia! Alleluia.